Hey guys, I just wanted to uh, give you a quick story. Uh, it's very enjoyable. And say thank you to everyone for your comments. Uh, it means a lot to me. I mean, I didn't know that like so many users would be like commenting and it's like, I guess your, your privacy, the way you have it set up to where your comments aren't public. So that's cool. I still appreciate it though. I mean, you know, that was a lot on my last uh, couple. I know the last one I put up is a little, you know, kind of soap opera-ish maybe because it, it was just describing a moment in that time to where that person and how you'll be able to, if you're following the storyline, fall back on that. Well, like I said, thank you very much. Subscribe, like, and even share, man, and leave a comment below, okay? Oh, let me get into this. This is in Malibu around 1978, okay? We had already finished our construction in the house that we were building. Um, and that's going to be a series too, of course. It's called the Malibu Years. But this is just so cool. And I was just eating lunch and I thought about it. And I'm all, you know, man, this has got to be said right now. So, like I said, it's 1978. We're in uh, Malibu up Decker Canyon. And if anybody knows that area, it's, it's up there, man. It's in the sticks, okay? I think it might have burnt down even because that fire was so vicious. It did burn down one of our other homes that was on Point Doom on Wandermere Road, which is kind of sad. I have posted that on some Facebook, which you can go check me out on Facebook. Um, and it showed like that because... It's like this light behind me, but it was the sun, and it gave like a natural lighting that was very, very unique, and I picked up on that in the box, so I was all like, cool, so I took a picture of it and posted it, right? Not knowing that house would be burnt down a year later or so, but um, this one here that I'm speaking of, I'm not sure about yet. I'm going to go by and check. I know the guest house burnt down because my piano, my wife said to me, you know, your piano was in there, and I'm like... Because when you get to a point that you really have that many instruments, I guess, it's kind of sad, but I actually forgot that I had that piano there. Kind of fucked, but it burnt to the ground. The only thing that was left are these two brass for the pedals. It didn't have the three. It only had two. Kind of funny, actually. Well, so what happened is, me and this guy that I met up there named Mark Metter. And Mark's still alive, and he lives up in Decker School Road. He's a really cool guy. We had a lot of good times growing up. He had this chick that lived up there. Her name was Rita. She was the caretaker of the owners of the Doom Room Bar, which was a big bar on Point Doom that everybody on that area... I mean, it was, it was big. It was, it was that and Trancus. And Trancus was bigger. But Point Doom, the Doom Room, was really in on it and tight. So it's like you can only imagine what really happened behind those closed doors because that's exactly what would happen. Yeah. Uh, the Newberts, that's all I'll say. I don't want to say their first names because I think they passed away That with the owners. They were notorious for that. So Mark says to me, Rob, you got to come with me, man. I'm going to introduce you to this lady that lives over here, Rita. And I'm all, okay. I get on my XR80. It was my brother's like little Honda. It's like, it's like a mini bike, but it has a little more kick. So phew, I take off following him. And he's on his 125, his Elsinore. So we get up there and this lady comes out. And I look at her and she looks like a witch. Literally a pretty good body for a lady that's like 48. I mean, you know, I was like not even 16 yet for, as a fact. Because if I was, I would have been driving. Or if I was on some restriction, I would have said it. So I do know this is before I had my driver's license. And it kind of makes sense because I hadn't popped my cherry yet. Because the party that was happening that night, the chick that I wanted, um, she got like swept up and taken away and somebody boned her. So kind of bummer on that one, you know. Hold on a sec. Dave? Did you make it home? Okay, cool. I love you. Bye-bye. So, that was my son, and usually I wouldn't do that, but I forgot 
that he was calling or I would not started this podcast, you guys. So really, I apologize because it's not professional. And I, like, I usually go in my other room or my studio. So that doesn't happen. Um, anyway, so we're up there at Rita's in Decker Canyon in Malibu, guys. Okay. We rode our motorcycles up there. Like Rita comes out. She looked like she, she was on a broom. Comes in. Hi, guys. And her eyes are like, they're, they're, oh, it's bizarre. You're looking back at it now. Okay, so I introduced and all that, and we go inside, not even more than a minute in there. She looks at Mark, and she's all, was like, he cool? And Mark's all, fuck yeah, Rob's cool, you know? And what she meant was, she liked getting wet. That's PCP. And I don't know, this chick, I mean, we're, we're in the middle of nowhere. So I found out later her boyfriend was a truck driver, and he'd come up there, his name was Rick. And he'd come up there, and Rick would bring, like, all kinds of cool stuff, right? So, meaning drugs um, and money. But her thing was just to do this, I guess, on a regular basis. So she asked me if I ever tried it before. And I remember I did once, and but not, like, it was in a school setting. I got thrown out of school for it. And I don't want to deviate from the story because it gets good. So what happens is I get wet, ripped out of my mind on dust. They were in cool cigarettes. She had them dipped and in the packet and in the freezer. Oh, she had, this lady had it down. So I'm fucked up. No sooner than I'm like, you know, uh, kind of. And I'm going to go, all right, guys, I'm going to go out, man, because I was like, tripping, man. And I got on my little motorcycle, XR80. Her house, the way it was built, and a lot of houses are like this in, around here, but the way the mountain had been cut out and they built the house to where the back of this house had a mountain on it. I mean, li literally, to where you could jump from the mountain to the roof of the house. Easy. No problem. I got the idea to take my motorcycle I mean, this is how fucked up I was. I took my XR80 Enduro, a little mini bike kind of thing. It's not a mini bike, though. I hope you guys know that it's not like, so anybody would go, oh, that's not too hard to do. But no, it's like a, it's big. It's like a bike, like a real bicycle type size. I got it on the roof. Okay. I <laughs> never forget this. Got it on the roof. And I go up and over the little ridge, and I, I'm right in the front to where, the, where we came in the first set high door. I look down, and she's just going back and forth like Woody the Woodpecker, man, blowing Mark. Mark's just sitting there looking at me like, yeah, woo, woo. I'm, I'm tripping. Like, whoa, this is uh, She, though, Looks, and one of the times when she comes back, her eyes caught me, and she stopped. I'll never forget this. And Nick go back down, and she goes, and pulls his dick out of her mouth and goes, What the fuck are you doing? How? I mean, freaked out. Mark, he didn't see my motorcycle like my bike, because where he was standing, you know, like this, and I'm here. So she could see line of sight, and he couldn't. He finally walks forward and turns around he just about lost it this guy literally was laughing so hard i thought he was gonna die because he was on angel dust okay you guys so he's tripping balls his face is beat red and we had like long blonde hair you know we were surfing all the time but that was our thing and i'll never forget it when he finally caught his breath and he's like you rode your fucking on the bike on the on the roof Oh my God, nobody's done that shit before. You wait, dude. I, I, I. He calls his brother hysterical because his brother was at home, you know, because there's no cell phones back then. So everything's landline or send smoke signals up, you know? Seriously. Fucking, he comes up, David met her. And David had a few people with him. It was a known fact that they like to go off and kind of, touch each other a little so uh i'm fucking like whoa dave you know and he's like what the fuck are you doing you moron 
and his friends that were with him, they all come out of the car, and I swear one of them goes like that. Could you just see him up there on the roof? <laughs> I kick it on, start it, turn around, and just took right off. It was only like, I'm like, it's only, it's like eight feet, but to make it to the little berm, you know, I had to go a couple feet, but I did it. And all of a sudden, oh my God, I cannot believe it. David, can you, what is wrong with your brother and his friends? And it is already starting to get dark by then. Okay, so I'm glad I got off that fucking roof, all right? I started, like, leveling out on the dust, I want to say. It wasn't, like, too bad, meaning anymore. I wasn't completely fucking just cooked, okay? People are starting to show up at Rita's place now, okay? This is where I met Julian that produced the Rolling Stones two albums. Steve Broy knew his name, really knew him, because Steve is really into, like, the music stuff, of course, like I am, but he's a little older than I am, you know, so he's got that, like, demograph of the history of, like, the Stones producers, and that, because that's just how we are. We like knowing what label produced it, mixed it, where at, what studio, anything, you know, we can just get knowledge to drop. So, he knew this guy, Julian. I met Julian there, and Julian was, you know, at least at the time he looked like he was in his 40s. His girlfriend looked like she was 19, and I found out she was. Um, and that's where this one girl was with that I liked. It was my first, you know, I was still a virgin, still a virgin, just like I'm jerking on it now, but only a little different then, you know. So, Angel Dust warns off. Around now, Everybody's kind of settled in. And there's this one guy. And I like I was brought up around other individuals and most people. So you guys have to understand. It's really sad that my mother would even allow or let me be raised in this environment. But I knew that he had cocaine. I knew that people were fucking just wigging, jonesing for it, as they call it. And... This guy, Julian, was a vacuum cleaner, obviously, and his girlfriend, because this gentleman, and I don't remember his name, he was going to give Mark and I a couple lines, right? Which I don't even think we got. I mean it. That's how, like, locked down it became. The minute Julian comes, this dude wigs out, puts the shit away, and, you know, uh-huh. And I'm just like, fuck. And Mark... He's like a year older than me or so, but he's like, what's going on, Robert? And I explained to him all, fuck, dude, this dude's like a, a, you know, a coke freak and shit. And he like owes this guy a few grand. He owed him like a couple grand. And because of the royalty checks he was getting and stuff, it was all good. But the time and spacing of those, you guys don't understand. In the music industry for us, it takes four months to get our publishing. Every four months we get it in quarters, okay? So when he's getting his money, unless he has an outside deal, and that's why a lot of us, you'll see, have the management companies and investments because of that, okay? So in any way, he's there because he's supposed to sell, sell John Michael Vincent like a quarter pack, like four ounces of blow. Having been like in that inner group, I knew what was going on. We were waiting for him. The only thing is, is we didn't think the way he was going to arrive was going to be the way he came. You could hear eight, maybe ten horses. No shit. He had rode up from Gary Busey's in, his, in Malibu West, okay? When I get into that story and describe Malibu West and everything, you'll see the two connect here. There's a fire road that you can get 
that goes all the way up from the rehab promises or the uh, one challenges, one of those ones right there. Right above it is the old Guru Maharaji's thing before the government seized it. There's a fire road. It goes all the way from there to Decker Canyon, to Encinal Canyon, all right? And if you know the area and shit, come on. As a matter of fact, there was many trails that went to like people's places like this. We heard Rita's like, that up, here he comes. Because at this time, everybody had left. It was just pretty much me, Rita. I don't think Rita's boyfriend was there. The guy that was going to sell the blow, and of course, Julian and his chick, you know. It was, it was comical looking back now, really comical. So, I look back at this now as if it was a movie, man. Because hearing the horses, now picture this, guys. You're not high on angel dust anymore. The chick that you've been making out with all night, like just bailed with somebody because you're obviously moving too slow. And you you hear these just cuffs that are just running up. And um, it was bizarre to see Jan Michael Vincent with no shirt on. The girls he was with, beautiful tits. But all of them people were babes. The guys looked good. They had all that. Jan Michael Vincent, the look he has. When he's even riding a horse. It's comical. I love you guys. That's why Malibu, we have, was saying it's a way of life. Now you know why. So, Jan hops off the horse. His chest out. He's all like, you know, glittery out coming. Yeah. It's like, for Christ's sake, dude, you're higher than fuck on cocaine. You're riding horses at like, I think it was close to like, it was past midnight for sure. Okay. And you're with chicks that are like, you know, nuts. Only shit that we do in Malibu, to tell you the truth. Because the distance from Malibu West and Trancus to where we were at up Decker Canyon it ain't a couple miles. That's like a 10-mile haul each way. Okay? Yeah. And they're what they're doing is they're burning. That's called the horse just runs because they know the path. So you just hold on for dear fucking life because that horse just wants to get back to the stable. Okay? <coughs> Jan Michael Vincent, he fucking comes up and he knows me. He's all Robert. And I'm all, what's up, Janny? I called him Janny. He's all, how you doing, dude? And I'm all pretty good. And I guess he knew I knew already what was going on. Come on. And he just wanted to make sure, I guess, I, how, how could I say this, that I didn't go back and just tell my mom the wrong thing, okay? Or anything at all. Because remember, I'm 15 years old, but I'm pretty educated at 15 here. Other than getting fucking laid yet. But anyway, that happened in like a month. It happened before I was 16. Jan tells me, Robert, we need to talk to you. I'm like, yeah. And mind you, people like just follow him. And they're just it's just the way it is, right? He stops and he doesn't yell. He just... Turns around and goes, hey, man, you think I could have some fucking privacy here? The guy with the blow is over there. I swear to God. He goes, you're following the wrong fucking dude if you want. And, and the guy just turned like white. The guy was like, huh? Like, why did you say that? Because remember, everybody had left. There's really nobody there. But to Julian, Rolling Stones producer, his twacked out model girlfriend, seriously, bend over. Sure, which way? Um, and that's it. And Rita, that's God knows what. She's probably still smoking names with us or not. And me and Mark. So Jan and I go off and we're talking. And he tells me like, you know, uh, the way he's look, the look he has, you guys, is so 
razor cut. You know, I've been working with Ernie. That's Ernest Borgnine. And uh, looks like it's going to be a good one. Yeah. Looks like it's going to be a good one. I, mind you, even though the, we only have three channels for everybody to look back back then. Night Wolf or Hawker. Whatever, whatever the fuck it's called, you guys. You know, I, I don't... <laughs> oh, my God. If Karen or anyone... I know that there's people that... Yeah, of course, because I'm alive. There's a few of them. Have, if anybody sees this, I apologize, but... Just reality. It's a real deal, man, okay? So... I pretty much square it off, you guys, that uh, I'm not going to tell my mom shit. I'm not going to say, yeah, I was up at Rita's and you wouldn't believe who fucking came up and, on horseback, practically naked, like he was Thor and with his women and his, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he gets fucking it squared with me, so I'm, it's all good. He takes off and leaves. And uh, Mark, I guess, hadn't had enough because he wanted... And, and mind you, you guys, this is like... You're digging deep in the barrel here because Rita, like I said, it was a witch. She was. And um, I'm just going to kick back, I guess, and, you know, have this old lady smoke angel dust with me and suck my dick all night. Found out it was more than that. He just was fucking the shit out of her, of course, but... What ends up happening is me, little old Robert, I'm alone now. The Coke dude had left. When he was done with his thing with Jan Michael Vincent, he was gone. He, I mean, whatever deal that Julian had with him, it must have been something like he was owed like thousands of dollars and he got his money, but it was a fucking nightmare to get. So... That's the vibe I pretty much got. Now, Julian has a Maserati Ghia. And that's a badass car for this time, you guys. I'm in the fucking thing. It goes 240 miles an hour. He had it going because I was screaming, don't go any faster. Because we became like real close because I got him his pussy. And that's going to be in part two of the Julian story um, where... 15 year old girls from school would come over and you know hear it all he had was on the stones music he didn't care what album it was all it was and there was nancy and jojo there the resident horse their parent you know they lived in the trailer park in paradise cove believe it or not malibu has one trailer park okay it's called paradise cove we call it parasite grove <laughs> anyway it's the reason it's there is because it has Ramirez Canyon and there's a secret tunnel that goes underneath to get there. Um, Barbara Streisand owns all the property up there. Um, I could keep name dropping and it's just it's pointless. So anyway, a lot of movie stars live up there. And um, Mrs. Uh, the Skater, she has a house right there. So at any rate, they live there in this trailer park, these girls. And my drummer, Matt, used to live there. And a lot of people would, I guess, migrate to there or whatever. It's not that big, okay? And then we have like a mobile home park that's on Point Doom that was put on the Chumash Indian burial grounds. So Jan leaves. He's gone. Coke guy's gone. It's just me looking like the way I did. Julian's girlfriend, she was like, yeah. I said, okay, I'm right here. I'll ride my bike. Follow me. And zoop, I'm gone. I'm already at my house because I was like, well, I'm going to get fucked. Drop my bike off. Go down. Julian comes. Comes up with some story or whatever. And at any rate, though, I knew where he lived on the point. Okay. And his girlfriend, she can't remember her name for the life of me. 
And she's one of those type of models that you see in all the magazines and stuff. But anyway, I'm glad he had left, you guys, really. Because what ended up happening is, he, because he left, karma works in weird ways. Janny came around. He didn't go straight down to Trancus. Instead, he rode around to see if I was, I guess, hanging by myself. And he wasn't too comfortable with the fact that I had the knowledge of what just went down and that I had the power to do something really stupid. And the people that would hear it had the power to, like, do something even stupider. <laughs> Whatever. But um, I had really convinced him that everything was cool, man. It was fine. It was no big deal. Now, about a year later, I'm at Gary Busey's house, and it's in Malibu West. Malibu West is a place, you guys, I don't care what anyone says, all right? It's like a low life, I mean, not low life, excuse me, low income place it used to be, and it's not, it's, it's million dollar homes. But it was just like the first housing track in Malibu, called Malibu West. They even had a little guard shack there. It was a joke. What they were doing was they tried to make the Malibu Colony North. That's all they were doing. They had their own beach club and, oh yeah, Broad Beach and, you know, Steve McQueen lives right here. So a lot of movie stars bought houses there because they had money, they could afford it, and it was quick type of thing. That's why you'll hear that brought up a lot. Like when you hear Jake Busey talk, you know, like we built his garage studio at the time. I haven't seen Jake in 20 years. I wish I could. I don't know if Jan's even alive. I heard he passed away probably, but the stories I have to tell you, the life in Malibu, of the bridges, the sheens, and everything in between is going to be the most intense novel, book, reality. You know, um, riding a motorcycle up to Jeff Bridges' house and running around the back side of his property up a cliff just to pull some wet weed to smoke so I'd have pot because it was dry nobody had weed you know he was teaching me how to that's a male Bob that's they, I don't know why they call me Bob Bobby but I found out why later and you know Martin coming down to Point Doom and I'm surfing by myself I'm like no exaggeration nine years old Martin, where's your mom at? Where's your dad at, Robert? How are they doing? You know, kind of like, what are you doing down here alone, dude? And Martin, he's a good guy. Uncle Marty, that's how close we are. Martin wouldn't leave until I was out of the water because it was already starting to get a little dark there. Martin was going to turn around and jog right back up anyway. You know, his jog he did from his house on Doom Drive down Gray Fox to the end and then to the beach and back up. It was a good jock. But he didn't feel comfortable leaving me there alone. Okay? Martin Sheen is one of the trippiest individuals around. There's a picture in his hallway in his home that it's a very famous picture because the place that it's taken doesn't, doesn't exist anymore. It was the Fourier entryway to Bro Bridges Beach House that he first bought. The bricks go up and around. And there's Janet Sheen holding Renee. There's Martin and there's Emilio, Ramon, and Charlie. And that was the first picture of them really coming into Malibu. Okay? And Bo opened up his house for them. I mean, it was nice. For the first two years, Emilio, because there was no babysitters there. There was none of this stuff. He would get dropped off and just play with me, basically, while my mom was either getting fucked by Lloyd or sucking his dick or whoever. And my mom would be in there, okay, you guys. And we played billiard, you know. And uh, while we were doing that, like Tatum O'Neill's putting on lipstick and wearing my mother's shoes. Oh, you got to understand my stepmother's shoes. Um, see the eyebrows? I keep them cut. Put the face over mine, you figure out who my dad is pretty quick, huh? And why they adopted a kid and called him Casey, but it hurts.
Anyway, I just want to end this uh, story today. And it was quick when I was eating my lunch. And I want you guys to see like how real I am. I literally had my burrito that I just got from K Rico's, my place. Shout out to K Rico, by the way, in LA. It's some of the best Mexican food off of Vermont and Melrose. You cannot miss it. Go in there and let John and Paloma, she's the cook, or Walter, Leslie, tell them Robert sent you on in. You get a discount. I mean that. I wanted to share this story about John Michael Vincent because it was just a little thing that happened, like kind of like the story I have about Brian Wilson, about a lot of people uh, that crossed paths with me. And thank you again, once again, you know, commenting, your likes, for sharing. I mean, it, it's unreal. Please subscribe and help me out because it does. You know, I have a musiccdbaby.com, Tyranny, Purchase Manipulator. Go get Final Romance. Help me out before they change everything. things. I signed a deal with a new company. I can't mention anything yet. But they're going to be changing the format. So I just wanted everybody to know that. I love you all a lot. And as my father used to say to me, Rimbambin, okay? Rimbambin means your pot's in the head, okay? E fangula mamara means go fuck your mother, okay? My dad was a very colorful guy. When we get into those stories, you'll hear, no, but fangul. I don't know why I say that. But I like it, I guess. You know, how could it be better? Hey, I'm freaking stunned.